medications that help us reduce the repetitive tasks make us more productive. But building them is hard since it stitches a lot of different applications together. To explore one such application, I've invited David Ting, Senior Vice President of Engineering at Nivis, a company that's revolutionizing the workflow automation by connecting data from multiple applications, compiling those insights, and then creating an end-to-end -end automation workflow. Hi, David. Welcome to the show. Hi, Priyanka. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and Nihilus. I am the SVP of engineering, and I'm responsible for Nihilus's product and technical execution. Nihilus's mission is to make the world more productive, and we built up a very scalable and secure platform to hand, commu handle communication data driving business process automation. Okay, so how does it matter to me, you, as end users? If there are enough developers to write all the applications you need to automate and streamline uh, workflow, the world will be much different today. Why will I have to enter receipt for expenses? Why is it so hard to juggle my calendar when I just need two hours of focus time? Building applications to reduce repetitive tasks are really hard, and Nihilus's mission is to make it easier for you to build high ROI application and make you a star in your work. Wow, productivity sounds really cool. And yes, I do not want to get my to upload my receipts into a system. It should just happen automatically. How does this actually work? So we capture real-time data from service providers such as Gmail, uh, Microsoft, IMAP. We have data pipelines power ML models behind the scene to create intelligent data objects. Data from these uh, insights trigger programmable workflows. And the challenge is building up a distributed real-time architecture for the billions of messages that we receive each day and keep the end-to-end -end latency low and predictable. All right. So now that we have put the customer expectation in perspective, and now that we know how Nihilus gathers the data and creates these insights, what were the technical drivers for working with Google Cloud? We came to Google with what we viewed as a very challenging mission. We have a large enterprise customer in the financial services space with very strict security requirements. PI cannot be stored persistently, and the lifetime of each server needs to be short to avoid potential in-memory hacks. This was a great reason for us to rethink the analysis architecture. The legacy Nihilus architecture is built with Python Flask on top of AWS. It was difficult and very costly to scale, and the end-to-end -end performance is unreliable. Interesting. Why was it so costly to scale? Nihilus processes over 20 terabytes of data every day, and the high volume of read and writes are mainly hitting against hundreds of MySQL shards. The workload is partitioned as email counts across a farm with a static assignment. Because volume of the emails is unpredictable for each account, there are many hotspots that emerge throughout the day and causing high variability and latency and in severe cases, reliability issues. In order to address this, we have to over-provision the system by a good margin in order to keep the latency in control. Based on extensive load testing, with the same traffic load, whenever we double the infrastructure footprint, we can lower the P90 latency in half. And at our current scale, doubling our footprint in, is really means like a million dollar in cloud cost. Uh, so that's not a sustainable strategy. Wow, that is a lot of money. All right, so three big major issues that you set out to solve, the security, scalability, performance, and obviously cost. So why did you pick Google Cloud? In my mind, Google Cloud has the best distributed technology and has been a true engineering partner throughout the journey. The security, scalability, and stability of the platform is second to none. GKE is currently the best option out of any cloud provider to run Kubernetes workload securely at scale in one of the most performant data stores in Spanner. So now I want to get into my favorite part, which is the architecture. How did you approach it? What was it like? And how is it going? We're able to transition to a brand new architecture and achieve a huge ROI for the project. The big bets are using GKE to handle the container orchestration, PubSub for message bus, and Spanner for relational data store has paid off handsomely. We went live on June 4th, 
and we really knocked it out of the park. Everything has been scaling effectively. For example, when an application has performed over 1 billion transactions in less than a month, and then this is on top of Spanner. You know, what I cannot believe is, is that uh, the latency is actually controlled very well to seven millisecond. And this really speaks volumes to the robustness of GCP services. By working closely with the GCP account team and the great partner in Bradspin, we're able to address most of the issues before the launch. Uh, so our customer QA team went in and tested our initial prototype. They found zero issue. And we spent the rest of the time optimizing the workload as we scale on GCP. Great. Well, how did you go from, you mentioned that you went from Python-based application to Go. You did an entire rewrite. Um, how did you do that? And um, moving from virtual machine instances on EC2 to GKE, how did that process happen? As part of the reimagining. You know, imagination exercise, we have to take some big bets. And what we did was we actually decided to rewrite our services in Go um, because we believe that there's a 10x throughput improvement when we uh, when we do this. The second part is moving um, basically the orchestration here uh, from cloud specific and, um, and kind of like an AWS autoscaler group. We basically want to go with the industry standard and GKE or Kubernetes. So we use GKE to orchestrate the containers. And due to the security requirements, the nodes have to be cycled very quickly. So we're able to take advantage of the fact that we can have up to 15,000 nodes in a Kubernetes cluster on GKE. And that's actually something that other cloud providers don't provide. In addition, we're also using GVisor to run the containers to create a strong isolation between the application and operating system. This helps us to lock down the host, memory, and storage access and enforce least permission principle at the operating system level. Earlier, you mentioned uh, 20 plus terabytes of data being processed in hundreds of MySQL shards, which obviously wasn't really efficient and was also extremely costly. How did you solve that as you reimagined this architecture in Google Cloud? We made some big bets. And so we use Spanner as the relational data store to keep states for the application and also store the keys uh, uh, for each one of the accounts we need to connect to. So fast and uh, read and write access performance is extremely critical for a large number of calls. We need the consistent high performance to have predictable end-to-end -end latency. And, uh, and that bet actually has paid off uh, by betting on running on GCP services versus doing it ourselves. Lastly, Nihilus does not have the whole PII. So this information is pushed so that once uh, our customers receive it, we purge the information from our store uh, for security reasons. For communication between those microservices, um, you used PubSub. Can we talk a little bit about why and how PubSub has been helpful? Yes. So we went from a very database-centric design to an event-centric design. So for us, the message bus is a key in the heart of our whole design. So we chose uh, Google PubSub uh, for an event-driven microservices architecture. And uh, just as a comparison, in the AWS world, in the legacy architecture, because it's actually more of a data-driven architecture, the, uh, the data is written into Dynamo. Then it gets converted to by a Lambda function, and then it goes to Kinesis uh, event stream. So in Google Cloud, we want to simplify this. So we went event first, and then so we re wrote it directly on Google PubSub. So it actually puts a lot of strain on the system. So there's a lot of trust that we have in how this scales and how it's going to perform reliably and uh, consistently. And we're very happy with the experience on Google PubSub where the performance latency is minimal, even when we have to burst to tens of thousands of write per second. So we even can even think about the event bus uh, to basically be like a data store for us uh, because it is that reliable and scalable for us. Yeah, that is amazing to hear. What are the what are some of the benefits that you've achieved after migrating to Google Cloud? This could not happen without exceptional service. So we're very happy with everyone we work with um, at GCP. We're able to get over 30 times the throughput per node 
after the rewrite in Go. And in addition, the elasticity of the architecture has to be amazing. It's reliable, latency doesn't go down, performance is actually stable, as we actually has traffic spike. Um, it just uh, outright amazing when uh, you work with a high scale architecture. Our customer has been migrating their entire user base onto Annihilus in June, and the process has been extremely smooth. And in addition, during Amazon Prime Day, where there's a lot of um, burst and e-commerce transaction come in within a minute, we saw, saw the number of nodes went from like a handful to tens of thousands of nodes like within a few minutes. And uh, we're able to handle the peak consistently and the P90 performance actually was stable even uh, with those spikes. And it's just really amazing to think back and we're able to accomplish out all of that in just three months. Wow. Three months is a pretty impressive timeline for a migration this big where you had to rewrite from, from uh, one language to another, in this case, Python to Go, and then um, and then also learning all these new tools, uh, GK, Spanner, and, um, and PubSub. And I'm sure it was a very massive team effort. Uh, what was your experience like working with the Google team and the partner in this process? I want to first thank the Nihilus engineering team. I have not worked with a group that is as talented and as dedicated in their work in my career. Secondly, I would like to thank our partner, GCP and Bespin, for making this happen. We're able to work as one team over emails and Slack and resolve issues in real time. Most companies will need at least one year to pull off an architectural overhaul of this order of magnitude. This is absolutely phenomenal. The speed, the collaboration, um, what is the road ahead? What does future technical enhancement look like for your architecture? With the success we experienced, we want to shoot bigger. Uh, so we have the confidence to handle more challenges ahead. And we're looking to work with uh, GCP on advanced AI ML use cases, where we're extracting valuable insight contained within communication channels, automating workflows for our clients. Our customers have planned to increase their usage several orders of magnitude, and they're pushing with all their marketing power to reach more users and customers. And of course, we have many more mega clients uh, waiting in our pipeline, and we have the confidence uh, with the partnership that we have to basically take on more of them concurrently. Well, all that sounds really exciting, and I wish you and the team good luck in implementing some of those enhancements. Thanks, David, for diving into the details of this incredible journey and architecture with me. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share our experience in Nihilus. Well, we just saw how Nihilus migrated to GKE, PubSub, and Spanner to achieve the performance, scalability, and security goals while keeping the costs in check. If you want to learn more, check out the blog I've linked below. And if you got any topic ideas for upcoming customer stories, put them in the comments below and I will find that use case and bring it to you. Bye.